Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. And so this is actually my previous sketchbook. I'm gonna show you a detailed sketchbook tour at the end of the year. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I sketched this little cafe sketch. And then walking around the park, finding a nice spot to sit down on the bench to sketch this beautiful view of Mount Royal. Now let's travel back in time to early October 2022 and here I am at Jean Mons Park around Plateau Mont Royal area and there's squirrels everywhere in all the parks in Montreal and it's a beautiful park. The trees are getting colorful now and I'm walking to this Edmunds cafe that I've already been to in June. I really like their coffee and pastry items. So here I am again, getting another cup of coffee and a little piece of uh, carrot cake. A quick 10 minute sketch before eating and drinking. The cup is really cute. And afterwards, I'm gonna sketch the uh, view in front of me. Um, there's nothing special outside the window and just this part of the cafe as it's pretty interesting with a lot of geometric shapes and stacking mugs on top of the special machine. And I'm starting to draw with my dark sepia fine liner pen. It's a kind of my new favorite pen now for the season of autumn. Dark sepia pen from Faber-Castell, medium tip. I'm starting to draw this lady waiting for her order. It's pretty easy to sketch someone from their back. So if you're, if you're a beginner, I really recommend you to start drawing people from their back and they won't really notice you at all, so you're safe. So I started drawing her the shape of her hair, her shoulders, her uh, just using simple lines to draw her outfit and her handbag on her shoulder. So that's it for her. Keep the line work really simple. And now it's time to compare and draw the height of the espresso machine in relationship to the, uh, to the person's height. It's the top of the machine is right around uh, the eye line of the person and it continues all the way down until um, her waist area. On top of the espresso machine, it's a de little details of those mugs. And now I want to draw this barista just showing around the front of the counter because they always move around. Most of the time, they don't come to this spot. So I really want to capture a barista standing over there. Now he is, I think he moved away. So somehow I have to use my memory and connecting the other objects around him. Uh, there's this um, cashier machines and behind him, there's this shelf. So a lot of abstract shapes, but adding a little bit of accentuation in between the gaps, the shadow areas with solid black ink, and a lot of these stacking paper cups. I'm drawing this line here that helps to define a division between the ceiling and the back wall. On the ceiling, uh, there are several light bulbs. Yeah, and just uh, finish drawing those light bulbs. Moving on to the counter, the front of the counter area, they have these little reliefs right on there, a little accentuation on the left side to show these are actually pop-up shapes. And keep adding some more little thingies around the counter area, adding another light bulb on the left. Three in a row, it's a nice uh, pattern. And keep building up the structures underneath the ceiling. Another little lamp down there and another one. Yeah, so in cafes and restaurants, they have so many lamps of uh, usually like different shapes and sizes. And now I'm starting to draw these small shapes of uh, cubicles, of shelf pieces. And they have, I think they have ingredients for baking inside these shelves. Yeah, and now connecting this bar over here, which is the prism and some other clusters of objects. Yeah, they have a lot of things in the back. We don't have to know exactly what those things are, just see the shape and draw them out. And just fill the left 
side with some more details. They have this uh, speaker phone there and some more shelves in a little bit of perspective and some bottles. Now, I think the burst that's coming back, so I'm just going to finish a bit more of details around him and just drawing the tablet um, of taking orders. The tablet is in the shape of a prism, so there are a lot of big and small three-dimensional shapes in the cafe. That's why I love drawing cafe interiors, is to see and define the three dimensions. Adding some more bottles around these shelves. Just for fun. These shapes are not perfect, just done very quickly and loosely. Some more boxes underneath. Just drawing these power outlets on the wall and hooks. And some other smaller shapes. A bit more accentuation, and that's it. That's the finished line work. Now it's time to add watercolors to uh, put in this warm atmosphere of the cafe in. A lot of nice orange yellow colors. Okay, so I always wet the area with clear water first by squeezing my water brush. Um, the warmth, the uh, luminosity of the lighting condition is not a solid yellow or yellow orange. As you can see, um, I'm putting this diluted uh, blend of lemon yellow and orange around the ceiling area and because the paper is really wet with water the water is kind of diluting this paint uh, even further okay this is the way that we show the glow of lighting and around this wall as well yeah very mellow and soft so for watercolors you really have to be aware of how much water to mix in to translate um, a phenomenon cor correctly so that's pretty much for the first layer and punching on this leftover gray. So I mix my own gray with blue, green, and a little bit magenta to paint the metallic surface of the espresso machine, leaving a little highlight, a white gap in the middle. And punching on a slight bit of more orange around the light bulb area. And to make your painting more lively, you have to try to blend at least two colors together to create a little bit of gradients. As you can see, I'm trying to blend on uh, lemon yellow and a bit of orange together, so it's not a singular color. And some more warm orange, orange browns here and there, as I see. I'm just keeping this painting process really loose. Yeah, because this is like a really ordinary scenery of a cafe, there's not a lot of uh, contrast in here. So just, you know, follow the flow and see how much color that I can add to. So in everyday life, we don't get, you know, a perfect scenery or like a perfect condition uh, to paint. Um, inspiration is actually everywhere. You, we could paint anytime, anywhere we want. And we don't have to wait for a perfect moment or sitting in a perfect place to begin a sketch. Yeah, and keep playing with the balance of these orange browns and uh, the purple bluish grays. It's very important to find a balance for any subject matter. Okay, the balance of uh, warm and cold colors or light and shade. Yeah, punching on the colors for the mugs on the espresso machine. A lot of grays here. And now I'm starting to paint the hair color of this lady with brown or burnt sienna. Mix in with a little bit of um, yellow ochre. And I remember uh, a lot of people these days are like wearing black or gray. So punching on this gray color for her vest and blue for her jeans. Yeah, and her skin color around the elbows. Adding a little contrast for her hair because hair is never flat. So the hair is always wrapping around the spherical shape of the head. So one side of the hair, it should be in shade to show the three dimension of the head. And punching on some more grays inside the shelves. 
some more intense grays. So we could control the intensity of the gray by mixing in more or less water. We don't have to mix a bunch of colors and putting on too many colors in one painting, but we could always control the intensity of the amount of water that we mix into it. Adding on some streaks of shade or reflections on this metallic surface, which is very much like a mirror. So the process of drawing and painting is always, um, always contains a sense of uncertainty. And, and there's always a bit of struggle, okay? So it seems like it's pretty easy for me to draw and paint like everything in the world, but actually every time when I draw and paint, I do have a bit of struggle. And that is actually good. If there's no struggle, if there's no challenge, if something is too easy for us to do, there's no fun. Um, I feel like a lot of people are waiting for the best time when they have mastered you know, all of the drawing and painting techniques to begin doing something. So you have to start somewhere. And once you are pretty good at it, you I think you will still have a bit of struggle. All artists are actually struggling during the process, even when they reach a pretty high level in techniques. Um, yeah, it's just like a never ending uh, fun process being an artist. I think, um, like me, I think I will never reach a state when I when um, I can paint like a machine and every single step is easy. I know what the end result is gonna look like. I don't know actually. So when I start a um, a drawing, the first few lines, I don't know what the end result will look like. And for the end result, um, it doesn't have to be like a photo re photo realistic style. Okay, so some people say my style is pretty realistic, but I don't think so. Um, I, I don't know what my style is. I just enjoy the fun of making lines on the paper and then adding layers of paint. I just enjoy the process without really thinking about what kind of style I'm trying to create. Yeah, and adding a little bit of uh, shade around the ceiling area. It's pretty bright in here, but not every single uh, space is covered in this uh, luminosity completely. Always a tiny bit of shade on top. And that's it. So here is the look of my finished sketch. It took me about like 30 minutes on location. And now it's time to move on. It's getting a little cloudy now. I, th I think rainstorm is on the way. Okay, so the view in front of me is really amazing here with the clouds and the Andrew monument and the colors of Mount Royal. So I need to sit down and do a full page sketch. So here I'm sitting down on the bench with all my materials around me. Um, so being an artist is not too easy. A lot of times when inspiration strikes, um, I don't have 100% energy, and that's okay. Uh, drawing and painting is a process to recharge spiritually. So I started with the tall column of the monument, which is a prism, and then adding this angel figure on top, starting with the outline, and then adding just a little bit of detail inside. It's just pretty much a human figure uh, with wings, adding some accentuation around the bottom just to give the uh, figure a little weight. And now, instead of finishing all of the uh, drawing part of the monument, I'm adding uh, this traffic sign pole over here, covering part of the monument. So this is the way that I do urban sketching. I like to connect things that is on top or around one another. And then I finish the base area of the monument behind the uh, traffic sign pole. And adding two tiny people sitting around the base, and there's another uh, lamp over here around the left side of the monument base. And I decided to color in the two poles with solid dark brown ink, just so they stand out better and not really merging with the monument. And now just kind of building up the platform underneath the monument. There's um, a bush over here and on the left side of the bush, there is another uh, traffic sign pole on the bottom of the bush. I want to add 
a person waiting for the light to change before she could cross the street. When people are standing and waiting for the traffic light, uh, it's a nice time to uh, draw them. Usually they stand there for at least 30 seconds, but that was the real time speed. I finished drawing her in, in about 20 seconds and adding another uh, traffic sign pole over here. There are a lot of these poles in different heights, in different depths of space in this uh, urban landscape. And adding some more smaller human figures in the distance. This one is like riding a bike. Another person. Yeah, adding people is not that hard and we don't have to draw re realistic people. And now I'm starting to draw the top of Mount Royal's contour outline. Yeah, a lot of little um, zigzag lines to show the foliage growth. Okay, so now this I have this large chunk of space defined. Actually two, actually three large chunks, the sky area, uh, the mountain area, and the street area. So three stripes of area defined now by these simple lines. And now I'm filling in the middle area with foliages very loosely and adding these uh, things on top of Mount Royal. Yeah, when I'm drawing these foliage definitions, my line work is very loose because foliages, they don't have definite outlines. So again, when we're drawing a landscape like this, we don't have to capture every single cluster of foliages on that mountain, just do our best. And, and also I'm very rarely looking at the paper, just kind of connecting one cluster of squiggly lines after another. And now drawing the uh, bottom right base of the mountain and it's rising up here with some more little trees in the middle ground. Now I want to add some more human figures. Always start to draw the head, the upper body, the lower body and the legs. That was an old lady, and here is her partner. Yeah, the, the bottom of the leg is always thinner than the upper body, and some more foliage definitions. Every drawing mark is actually an abstract symbol suggesting what the real thing is. And adding another short horizontal line, connecting that with another person and another one that's a pretty a pretty busy plaza and drawing the tree trunks of these trees in the middle ground this line is very important that invites the viewer in gives a sense of depth the walkway adding another short horizontal line there's so many uh, divisions of fields in here the walkway in the middle ground uh, the lawn the curb line in the foreground, the street lines. So I just added the uh, the stairs on the bottom of the monument and two people in the foreground. It needs a little bit more balance on the left with more people and another horizontal line. And here is a look of my finished line drawing and the girl with a black backpack and the man waiting for the traffic light to change they're still there so a lot of times you know it's good to, to capture people to know that these people are probably won't be able to move in the, in the next 30 seconds or so um, those are nice people to be captured in our sketches okay so now i just wetted the sky area with clear water and adding this mellow medium yellow so when painting sky is always a good idea to start painting the lightest tone first and some more lemon yellow my brush stroke is following the direction of the movement of the clouds and now I'm punching on some fresh cerulean blue for the top of the sky where the sky is showing a little bit and using a little loose choppy brush strokes because in between there's thin pieces of clouds and now I'm just dragging this residue of cerulean blue on my brush tip 
for for the middle part of this uh, piece of sky there, you got the sky again. It could contain like different tones of the same color. And now I'm starting to add this、um, shade color for the clouds. Okay, so this is a mix of ultramarine blue with a bit of royal purple. Again, I'm varying my、uh, brushstroke lens and hand pressure to create different kinds of brushstrokes. Again, being aware of the movement of these clouds. Brushstroke is actually very important in painting sky, and we don't have to flatten all of our brushstrokes. And now moving on to the right side, again just dragging this bit of residue of this bluish gray around to capture the flow of the clouds. And this one, I just dip my brush in the、uh, painting palette again for a more intense gray, just leading the shade to another direction. Sometimes the sky, the clouds are moving in two different directions. Yeah, and you really have to know how your paper works, how your paint reacts on different kinds of paper. So this is the Etcher mixed media sketchbook, and the paint is acting in a really special way. Brushstrokes can be, you know, shown pretty clearly, and I like the effect. It's really creating the, the a sense of three dimension for these clouds, and adding a bit more gray in another direction. There are actually a lot of factors that we can't really control. Like you know, when we press the the brush down, it's going to create a slightly the random mark on there that we cannot predict, and I just let it go. That's the charm of watercolors. We can't control every single mark, so just let it go. It's not going to be exactly the same as the real sky, but it's just my response and the magic of the paint working. Okay, so that's it for the sky area. I'm not gonna overstir it. I really capture. I think I really capture the movement and the spirit of the sky. It's like the angel is really rising into the heaven. And now I'm adding the first layer for these foliages, lime green. And for these mountain foliages, is、uh, orange mixing with a tiny bit of lime green. It's a golden green. And blending on some fresh lime green on top, wet into wet. And again, I'm keeping my choppy brush marks to show the、uh, the fold of the foliages. And all of these foliages are overlapping on top of one another. None of these are isolated pieces. Yeah, so it's a very interesting kind of three dimension here. So now I'm kind of like layering. With more vibrant orange yellows, and adding some more、um, red oranges over here. So every single brushstroke is slightly different and of a different shape. When we're painting foliages, we don't have to stay、um, in the same brushstroke shape or the same kind of mark all the time. You have to try to vary、uh, your your pressure. Different pressures, the tone of that color is going to turn out slightly different. That's the interesting about watercolors. And the same brush, loaded with the same amount of paint,、uh, pressed onto different kind of papers, you're going to have different results. And that's another、um, unpredictable quality about watercolors. And just punching on some orange greens. So these are kind of like a muted oranges with a little bit of green mixed in. The colors of the foliages are, are, are very vibrant, but they are not artificially vibrant. These are a slightly muddy and organic colors. Putting on a little bit of、uh, purple, purplish brown, mixing a little royal purple into burnt sienna. And punching on some radiant green or sap green, and need some mid tones now. And again, I just punch the colors on without you know stirring the area. It's very important just to be brave and be bold when painting foliages.
just punch the colors on and save the brush strokes without over stirring. Yeah, a slight bit more with a residue of uh, viridian green around the top of, uh, of the little mountain. This is slightly diluted from before. So as you can see, every single brush stroke is a slight different intensity, even though it's the same color. And a little bit of brownish red around here, as I observe. I love these patches of colors combined together. It really uh, looks like it smells, it smells like uh, autumn. Yeah, some more playful brush strokes of Viridian Green. And that's pretty much it for the layerings of uh, foliages for Mount Royal. And now I'm adding these pretty important uh, dense shades around the base of the mountain just to create uh, a sense of density for the mountain so it doesn't look like it's floating in the air. Yeah, so that deep gray shade on the base of the mountain is pretty important. And adding a little bit of uh, diluted gray for the concrete walkway area. And this is the same color that I use for the base of the mountain. It's just much diluted. It contains mostly water. And now it's time to paint the monument. I just love it so much. So this is a mix of blue and green with a tiny bit of, tiny bit of brown or burnt sienna mix in. Darker shades for the wings and the bottom of her body. And dilute the same color and put a little shade on the left side because this column is a prism shape. One side is dark, one side is bright. And adding some more stronger colors for these two trees in the, uh, in the middle ground. So when we're adding stronger colors, it's really coming forward. And same for these trees around the bottom of the mountain that are closer to the viewer. Yeah, and some, some of them are really sticking out a lot. Yeah, adding slightly bit more vibrancy for certain trees in the middle as well. So they really pop out. So the uh, three dimension of the mountain is really uneven. Some of the trees might be, you know, popping out slightly more. And just adding some final dark grays around the bottom of the uh, the curbs and the left side of the monument and final punch of shade around the wings of the angel the bottom of her uh, of her of her coat and for this uh, traffic sign pole there that's it and here is the look of my finished sketch. It took me about uh, 40 minutes on location. I had to finish it quickly because I think rain is coming. Thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And I will see you again very soon next time. Have a great day, everyone.